probably 30 seconds ahead of it. We just got in the basement and the tornado hit. It took two minutes. It came with it real, like within 15 minutes and was here and gone. It's an experience we hear about all too often. Tornado survivors describing how the powerful storms seemingly come out of nowhere. Minutes can mean the difference between life and death. And while advances have been made in detecting tornadoes, forecasters are still unable to predict exactly when and where a twister will touch down. Tony DeCopel is here with the effort to increase the warning time. Tony, good morning. Good morning. Researchers at four universities are working to improve forecasting by using drones. The unmanned aircraft can do what the rest of us cannot, flying into the heart of dangerous weather systems to collect data on the storms. 13 minutes. That's the average time between the detection of a tornado forming to when it touches down, leaving people in its path scrambling to find a safe place. Let's look at the condensate coming up. Oh, man! This countdown was a reality for parts of the Midwest and South earlier last week as severe storms and tornadoes battered the areas, leaving at least 14 people dead. Oh my gosh! Unlike other weather systems, tornadoes quickly, are hard to predict and even harder to track. Jamie Jacob and his team from Oklahoma State University are working on a set of drones designed to fly into and analyze severe weather systems. The meteorologists are very good at predicting uh, how, is it, when, and where the storm is going to develop, uh, but not so good at determining when a storm is going to form a tornado at a particular place or a particular time. They're built to withstand rain, hail, and winds of at least 80 miles an hour. And they drop a device called a drop zone that collects data from inside a potential tornado. So the goal is to be able to get more data that feeds directly into those models and do that in real time. That real-time data can be a key factor in saving lives when a tornado is beginning to form. We can get to the point where we can warn an hour ahead of time. The drones need a few more years of testing before being put to use by the National Weather Service. The technology uh, is a little ahead of the regulatory processes, however, so we may have to wait for uh, the, the legal side uh, to catch up with us. And there's still some technical difficulties they're working on. Right now, the drones aren't ready at a moment's notice. It takes about four hours of prep time. So I guess you need to forecast for yeah. the forecast drone. Yeah. And they, but the drones they're going to do there. it. Yeah. It's easy to make fun of weather forecasting and, and weather prediction. However, when you think about technology that has saved lives over the last five or six decades, Certainly. this is a big one. Yeah, no, this is huge. Uh, the regulatory infrastructure does need to catch up, in, as it does in so many other arenas. To get those drones actually out there. Yeah. And, and I remember when the tornado dropped out of the sky in my first job in Oklahoma. And I'll tell you, you need out of nowhere and you never forget it. Yeah, I, I need a couple imagine. thanks for being here. We're here just east of Stillwater where students are launching these drones equipped with sensors up into the sky, measuring every little detail, hoping to give people advanced warning of severe weather. Into the sky, getting that data that could save you. Really what we're looking for is developing systems to help us better understand the atmosphere. And improve weather forecasting. It's part of the Cloud Map project where drones are tested and used as flying weather stations. They can even pick up the smallest things, even on a clear day. What we're doing is measuring very simple things pressure, temperature, humidity, wind speed. And that sounds very simplistic, but those are things that we can't pick up with radar. We have different sensors on board, like a five hole probe, which is recording wind velocity. Um, so we have directions and speeds for the different. Um, wind that's blowing. At 3,000 feet in the sky, they fly in the action zone where humidity and heat collide. In Oklahoma, it's really important because that's where a lot of our severe weather forms. The drones fly higher than the weather towers and can be used instead of a manned aircraft. A big part of that goes into the safety aspect of not having a pilot on board. Information collected can be used to stay ahead of the storms. The goal is to give the public a one hour lead time before a tornado forms. The meteorologists uh, are confident that if we provide them with the correct data, they'll be able to get it to that point. The project has about two more years of testing left, and drones can also be flown into storms to retrieve even more data. Near Stillwater, Ian Smith, Oklahoma's News Channel 4. I'm in Oklahoma, where a group of researchers is taking a radically innovative approach to save humans from these unpredictable monsters. Hi. Hello. Instead of looking at tornadoes, they listen to them. The infrasonic microphone's right over here. Looks like a sprinkler. It does. 
The canister has four hoses that feed into it. And that's where all the sound comes in. Ah. And then there's just a typical microphone that's inside of here. So do you have the sound of a tornado on file? Yes, we do. All right, here's our wind tunnel lab. Thank you. Over here, we have the one tornado that we recorded on May 11, 2017. Right about here, we started to pick up these tones that are associated with the tornado. And it leaves this range from 0.5 hertz to 20 hertz, which is the limit of human hearing. But we've taken the data, and we can play it back 16 times faster to where we can hear it. As it approaches, the strength of this signal is growing. Then this is the point where the tornado forms. We had about eight minutes that we were recording this tornado before it ever touched down. That's potentially eight more minutes than most people have now to find safety and for emergency teams to get into action. It's short of the one hour lead time authorities are striving for, but it's a step in the right direction. This is part of a larger collaboration where we work with a larger team that uses drones to go and measure the atmosphere at the spot we think a tornado is forming, and you'll be less likely to get false alarms. But these aren't your average drones. They're mini jet planes built to battle apocalyptic storms. Hi, Jamie. Hillary, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Dr. Jamie Jacob thinks jet engines are the key to sending drones into the heart of a supercell. The team is about to set off the jet for a little test run. This drone can weigh less than 20 pounds, but can fly upwards of 170 miles an hour. This right here is the ultimate storm chaser. Wow. The drone carries sensors in its fuselage, but can also deploy miniature ones dropped on parachutes to capture all kinds of atmospheric data. It's designed to operate in a zone that's challenging for airplanes and weather balloons, less than 1,000 feet up in the air. What we want to do is get that pressure, temperature, humidity, the wind speeds that are happening right around that cyclone. This cutting edge aircraft costs nearly $30,000 to build, only to be flown into a tornado where it could be immediately destroyed all for human safety. The whole point is to be able to get that information that storm chasers like Tim Samaras you know, have tried to get in the past. This gives them a capability that it keeps them out of harm's way. Here it comes. Nice. Oh, that thing can really fly. Nice work, you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. It is being called a breakthrough in weather prediction. Researchers at OU and OSU are working to revolutionize storm tracking. Steve Shaw is back from the National Weather Center to tell us what this is all about. Steve. Kelly and Amanda, advances in weather radar has saved many lives. OU and OSU professors say this is the next big thing. They're called unmanned air vehicles, unmanned aircraft systems, or drones. This will change how we forecast weather across the entire globe. OSU aerospace engineering professor Jamie Jacob and OU meteorology professor Phil Chilson are using them to solve a riddle. And I don't use this term lightly, a game changer. It's going to completely revolutionize how we do weather. Unmanned air vehicles are able to fly through the lowest level of our atmosphere. It's called the boundary layer. Weather radar has always had a hard time reading it accurately because of trees, buildings, and uneven terrain. These things, equipped with atmospheric sensors, the experts say will make it much easier. 30 years ago, the average warning time for a tornado in America was two minutes. These days, it's about 10 to 12 minutes. But with these things, it could be a whole lot different. The goal of the 20 person team working on this project is to be able to forecast a tornado <laughs> that's an hour away, not 10 or 12 minutes. And it's a really unique opportunity for us to bring the two universities together and collaborate on this project. That data though, if it gets better and it can by getting information from these drones, it's put instantly into this model data and it's all short term and it can tell you uh, with the data being put into it, real-time data, what the storm is doing and, and will help you better forecast. OU and OSU are joining forces on this with the help of a $6 million federal grant. The project should last about four years. Steve Shaw, News 9. Drones delivering your packages, taking a taxi through the air. That's the future, and OSU researchers are working toward it right now.
Wind around tall buildings can be hazardous. Jamie Jacob, along with researchers at OU and other universities, are assisting NASA in creating a new air safety system. So NASA has been tasked with developing what's called the Unmanned Traffic Management System, or UTM. And this is going to be the computer network uh, that coordinates uh, autonomous flights, both for drones as well as other advanced aerial mobility applications. You know, think Uber Air Taxi. Urban and suburban areas have major impacts on temperature, precipitation, and wind. Because everyone's had the experience where you, you know, you're walking along an urban sidewalk. Uh, it's really pleasant. You turn a corner and, you know, you get blasted by, you know, 50 mile an hour wind. Understanding these microclimates even helps make air travel safer and more efficient now. When there's a risk of icing, we just de-ice all the planes, you know, whether they need it or not. And so this will give us a much better understanding of, you know, things such as ice, uh, wind shear, uh, fog. Another side benefit, developing better ventilation systems for buildings to help with airborne viruses like COVID-19 and the flu. Moving forward, the Oklahoma wind is going to be increasingly important as drones and even possibly air taxis take to the skies. Field meteorologist Michael Armstrong, KSCO 5 News. The search for survivors is underway across the southern and midwestern United States after a series of powerful tornadoes ripped through towns and cities there. At least 26 people have died during two days of severe weather. Residents are now sifting through debris that was once their homes. It's raised more questions about how accurately we can predict tornadoes. The BBC's Franz Strasser reports from Oklahoma where meteorologists are using drones to try and improve their forecasts. radar, uh, we can determine where a tornado is about 10 minutes before it strikes. That's plateaued in about the last decade, meaning our radars haven't gotten any better at determining that early signature. My name is Jamie Jacob. I'm a professor of aerospace engineering at Oklahoma State University. One of the things we'd like to be able to do is have UAVs fly in developing thunderstorms to figure out, well, why does one supercell form a tornado when another one does not. Our UAV that we're designing will carry numerous drop sons on board. So as it's flying in areas of interest, it'll be able to drop out little payloads that measures all those important meteorological parameters. Looks like a mess to most people. We call it a paintball plot, but that's uh, seven different computer models and their forecast of uh, thunderstorms or convection over the Gulf of Mexico. And you see some bright colors here, and I can mouse over those. And this was an event back on um, April 3rd, widespread severe weather across from Texas all the way up into the Ohio Valley. And you can see that the model actually began indicating the potential. Uh, for this severe weather event or outbreak seven days in advance. So dealing with this enormous amount of information is one of the bigger challenges uh, that we face in meteorology. We have a lot of data. The question is, can we exploit that and pull out some information from that that is useful? One of the revolutionary aspects in, in forecasting in recent decades has been the use of ensemble models. So it used to be uh, with limited computer power, you could only really run a, a one or two simulations a day of what the atmosphere was going to do. And also for the first time, meteorologists have at their disposal the ability to understand whether the atmosphere is in a regime that is predictable or one in which it's rather unpredictable. And that's really based on, on how the ensembles agree or disagree as you go out in time. In terms of search and rescue, one of the things that we want to be able to do is uh, allow UAVs to assist the first responders in finding survivors. This is an idea of what the final model will look like. It's made out of a carbon fiber, so that way it's uh, heat resistant, that's more rugged. That means flying closely overhead with infrared uh, video that provides that directly back to the searchers so they can find um, people trapped in the rubble while at the same time being quiet so that the way the searchers can listen for the sounds of the victims.
use becomes more and more common, people are finding different ways to use them. Oklahoma's two largest colleges, OSU and OU, are putting their rivalries aside to forge a new way in forecasting the weather. Dr. Jamie Jacob has been using drones for weather research since 2014. I really just started off at looking at, is, is this even possible? You know, can we get the data that we would like to see that we could provide back to meteorologists for better forecasting? All the way up to now, we're really doing good science with it. He is the director of the Unmanned Systems Research Institute at OSU. Partnering with OU, they have a team of meteorologists and engineers working to gather data before and during a storm. This spring, the goal is to look at how storms form. One of the big questions we have is, well, we know this is going to be a good day for storms, but how do we know a storm is going to crop up in this location versus this location? These aren't like your kid's drone. The equipment ranges from fixed-wing drones that can be launched from cars to more of the typical quadcopter drones. The size of the vehicle used is dependent on what they're trying to measure and what environment it will fly in. While I was in Stillwater, students were problem solving how to attach some of the instruments to the unmanned vehicles. The FAA has cleared the team to conduct research this spring across western Oklahoma into the Texas Panhandle. As those storms are starting to form, we'll have teams on site flying UAVs into the storm formation areas. The drones are equipped to measure temperature, pressure, humidity, and wind speed, many pieces of data that radars can't detect. You really need something that goes out and touches the air and is essentially able to do that and take that measurement and then provide it back to the forecasters. The team has been able to feed the data back in real time to the National Weather Service. All right, while meteorologist Laura Mock was in Stillwater, she also found out how researchers have tackled the question, what do tornadoes sound like? Dr. Brian Elbing at OSU has the answer for us. The sound commonly de described as a freight train comes from the turbulence of the air, blowing things around, not the tornado itself. Dr. Elbing says tornadoes emit infrasound waves that correlate to their strength. Now, infrasound waves are just below what people can hear. So in his research, he used large microphones that are more sensitive to lower frequencies. Turns out the lower the frequency, the bigger the tornado. Yeah, the signal has been detected as tornadoes develop, and with more research, this could save lives by increasing tornado lead time. If I'm picking up a signal, it means that something is happening that's similar-ish to a tornado. Like, we've had some funnel clouds form that never formed a tornado, and we picked up signatures on that, too. So we, we know that it requires a tight rotation to produce this. All right, what you just heard. That's a tornado from 2017 in Perkins, right? The sound has been sped up the four times so we can hear it. There are microphones on the OSU campus, and more will be deployed this year on storm-chasing vehicles and up in the air to collect more of this data. Dr. Elbing's goal is to pinpoint exactly how the tornado is producing these sounds to help meteorologists learn more about how tornadoes form. They call that tornado genesis. Really fascinating yeah. work.